On the chef server, almost everything that we're going to be doing, we're going to need pseudo privileges to do so. So I'm going to switch over to being the root user. And I'm going to start off by going into the temp directory. And from here, we're going to actually have to pull down the RPM for the chef server and install it. So if we go back to our browser, there'll be a link to this exact page, but it's downloads.chef.io slash chef dash server. And we want to make sure we download a very specific version. To follow along with this course, I'm going to be using the version 12.17.33, which is the newest version at the time of recording. It's also compatible with what you're going to potentially see on the exam. And by making sure we're running the same version, we're not going to run into any issues where something is slightly different because you're using a newer version of this. Since we're running on CentOS 7, we're going to grab the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 URL here. And then we're going to use curl to download this. With the package downloaded, we can use rpm-uvh with the path to the RPM. This will actually install it and give us a couple of utilities that we'll use in order to get the Chef server up and running. Chef server actually consists of a lot of different services that it needs. And will install itself or configure itself utilizing Chef in a local environment. Now that Chef Server Core is installed, we have access to the Chef Server CTL command, and we're going to use this and the reconfigure subcommand to actually execute some Chef cookbooks that will install the packages and set up the configuration that we need in order to run Chef Server. This command is going to take quite some time to complete, could take Anywhere up to a half hour kind of depends on the server that you're working with. So go grab a cup of coffee and join me when we come back. Once the installation has completed, or the reconfiguration rather, let's take a look at what is actually running by using Chef Server CTL and the service list. Everywhere we see an asterisk, that just means that this is running. So you can see there are a lot of different services that Chef Server is reliant on all the way down to Nginx to be the handler for HTTP, or things like Bookshelf to be the storage of cookbooks. Some of these are internally developed tools specific to Chef Server, and then some of them are not. So it has a RabbitMQ service that it needs, but that was not written by Chef for the sake of Chef Server. It's just something that they utilized along the way. It's important to realize that Chef Server isn't just like one piece of software. It's a combination of a lot of big powerful pieces of software that give us this core functionality that we're going to see as we continue developing more and more with Chef. The next thing we're going to do is create our first user. So we're going to use Chef Server CTL user create, and then it's going to take a username, which this will be like your login. So for me, I'm just going to use my first name. Then it's going to take a first name, a last name, an email address, and then a password. And then you can also specify a file name, and this is where a key is going to go that can be used to authenticate this user when we utilize the Chef client. So for this, I'm going to put this in home user, user, which since I'm going with Keith, I'll call it Keith.pem. Now I have my own user. I would use your own for that. You put your name in place of my name. And the user doesn't really do much until it's added as part of an organization. So for that, we're going to use Chef Server CTL again and org create. Now we need a short organization name, which this is going to be a little bit more specific than some other things. It has rules for validating, and it needs to start with a lowercase letter or number. So it can't be an uppercase letter, and it can only contain lowercase letters, digits, so numbers, hyphens and underscores. But this is essentially the username for the organization. In this case, I'm going to use Linux Academy as my actual organization. And then we get to give it a full organization name. So this will be Linux Academy Inc. And then we're going to set up the association user. And this will be the first admin user for this organization. And we'll pass in the username that we had created earlier on. So I used Keith because that's my name. And I'm going to put that right here and it will associate these. And once again, we get a file name that's going to be the validator for the organization rather than the validator for the individual user. 
And for the time being, I'm going to put this inside of the user directory also, and I'm gonna put this as Linux Academy validator.pem. I'm putting it there so that I can SCP that off of the server if I need to. If we wanted to, we could stop right there and actually have a Chef server running with our user and our organization. And with those two things, we could set up everything that we needed to. One of the added features that a lot of people like to use with Chef server is going to be a plugin that you can install called Chef Manage. Chef Manage is a Ruby on Rails application that provides a web user interface for us to go in and actually see the configuration that we have stored inside of our Chef server. We can see the users that we have, the organizations, also what cookbooks, versions of the cookbooks, and nodes are utilizing those cookbooks. So it is rather handy to actually have installed if you want to visually see that outside of a text-based interface like a terminal. Well, we're going to install that using chef server ctl install and chef dash manage. Now that that's completed, we're going to utilize chef server ctl reconfigure one more time. This will be significantly faster this time because as we talked about, Chef uses a test and repair approach. So any of the settings that were previously installed when we ran Chef Server CTL reconfigure don't need to be overwritten because we haven't modified them. This is going to apply new configuration based on the installation of Chef Manage. The last step that we actually need to go through before we can utilize Chef Manage is going to be by using the chef manage ctl reconfigure. And when we do this, we're going to have to accept a license agreement. We're going to type yes to accept. And this is going to go and once again apply some more configuration changes. With all of this finished, we are actually able to utilize our web browser now. And if we take the IP address that we were working with, or we could use the public host name, if we copy this one more time, and we open up a new window, we have to deal with the fact that uh, we're working with a self-signed certificate, but that's okay. And once we accept that, we are running the Chef Manage UI. From here, I can utilize my username and the password that I had set up. And now we're inside of the Chef Manage UI. We've successfully set up a Chef server, which is a culmination of quite a few different services that are running, and we've installed a plugin so that we can have a user interface for it that we can access through the web. And in the videos to come, we're going to set up everything that we need to so that we can interact with this server. <laughs>